Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are doing our first modification to the 15TB ePro. Not that this camper isn't awesome, but there's a few things we like to change just to, you know, extend our camping season and stuff like that. As we progress through uh, modifications with this camper, I'll be doing videos of them, how I did them. Um, this is just informative, me doing things that I want to do. It's not a tutorial, but anyway, take that as you will. In future videos, you'll see some of the modifications we do will be combined into one video because they just aren't major enough to uh, you know constitute its own video in this video what we're going to be doing is changing out the tongue battery box on the 15 tb the one that comes with it is a little small i don't know if it's with that like that in every camper you know this is you know the one we own and the battery box it's a technically a double battery box but it only holds smaller batteries the batteries that come with this are 80 amp hours that is not nearly enough for us to boondock like we like to do boondocking is um, you know going off grid so we're not plugged in somewhere so we need a lot of battery power bigger lithiums like 100 amp hour lithiums um, 100 amp hour AGM batteries will not fit in this box with two of them so we're going to be changing this today. And the other reason too is that the box that comes with this is plastic and I'm afraid that somebody's going to try to steal our batteries and I'm going to be switching it to a nice metal box so it can be locked. I picked up this battery box from Harbor Freight. It's 115 bucks plus tax. So it's, it's metal um, and it is 35 inches wide so it should easily hold a couple batteries and maybe you know a couple other little tools and stuff in this box. What I'm going to do today is show you how I am changing this out, maybe some tips, what you need to know when doing this to your GeoPro or ePro uh, camper. So let me show you what the setup is on here now and then we'll go from there. So here is the battery box that comes standard on the ePro and again I don't know if this is the same battery box that they put on larger models but you can see the batteries that are in here are pretty small and they take up the whole box. Um, so it's all plastic. There's not really any um, security to it. They do tell you how to hook up two 12 volt and two six volt batteries in there, but. So we're gonna be changing out these batteries to something a little bit bigger. I'm not going lithium yet. We'll be doing that in the future. But uh, I did, as a precursor, I took the cover off the propane tanks so it's easier to get to these. So the first thing we'll need is a set of sockets. You can see on the batteries there's some hex nuts on the terminals. So we'll have to use our socket set to get those out. And then we need a drill to get this battery box off and then install the new one. You want to make sure that you disconnect power from the camper. The converter, if it's plugged in, will supply enough voltage to charge the battery and we don't want that happening. So we will disconnect that, make sure we have no power over here. The solar panels are still connected, but once we remove the positive terminal, that'll disconnect the solar charge controller. We should be pretty safe. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the positive battery terminal. So this is a 11 16 socket. Not sure that yours is the same, but that's what it is on mine. Okay. So I went ahead and went inside and made sure that disconnecting this disconnected the solar charge controller, which it did. So if you go inside after you disconnect this positive lead, you'll see that the charge controller is blank, which means we're not getting any power coming out this way. So now we're safe to work. So what you're gonna see when you're taking this apart is you have one long wire that's positive to positive, and then one long wire that's negative to negative. So what that does is basically this stays a 12 volt system, even though there's two 12 volt batteries, and it adds uh, the capacity of each battery together. So it looks like we've got a lot of different sized 
term, uh, screws on this guy. So this one over here is also an 11 16 And then it looks like on the negative terminals, we got a smaller one, which may be a half inch. Let's see. Nope. 9 16 So we got 11 16 and 9 16 Okay, so all of our battery terminals are disconnected. So now we can actually remove the old batteries. Okay, now in the bottom of the box, there are some self-tapping screws that go right through this box. So we're gonna have to remove those. If you are working on the same camper, these screws have a 3 8 hex head on them. So super easy to remove. All right, let's get our new battery box ready to go. Well, it's been a couple of days and I've ran into a comedy of errors. So I've had to move a bunch of stuff to try to get this battery box to work. So let me show you. So this is still the old battery box, but the propane tank mount was way too close to the box the new battery box so you couldn't like open it the lid the lid hits here and you can't open it like or otherwise it'll tilt the whole box the other issue i saw was um we had the dealer put on the stabilizer hitch the weight distribution hitch and this uh bracket here was actually further back than that one and it wouldn't allow the battery box to sit here. So I was able to move this one forward and then move the propane tanks forward. I still gotta attach all the, the bolts and stuff to it, but should be good there. So now what I need to do is on the new battery box, I have to drill a hole in the back so we can get all the wires in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, guys, you can see I've got the cables in the box now. So all I did was use a step bit. So I've got a step bit kit. You can pick those up at Home Depot or whatever, but that'll allow you to drill the right size of hole you need right into the metal there. I'll fill it up with some silicone as well so we don't get any water in here. But So I'm gonna go ahead and go grab the new batteries and we'll get them hooked back up. And Actually, I still need to attach the box. I'm just using the same self-tapping screws that the old box used, so I'm gonna attach that and then get the new batteries in. So now I just need to reconnect these batteries um, like the old ones were. So basically, we just go um, positive. So we have our main positive here, our main negative. Pretty sure this is a negative, yep. So negative, and then, and then we have our cables to connect the batteries together. So pretty easy, we'll go ahead and get that done. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say don't do what I did. This battery in particular is not labeled pr very well. This one here shows you red and black, positive, negative. This one, do you see red and black anywhere? No, there's just a little stamp right there that says positive, and then there's a little itty bitty stamp there that says negative. If you hook it up wrong, you might start a fire, but you can see there's a little melt spot right there, and I screwed up the screw terminal, so I had to go get a post uh, terminal at the auto parts store, which is fine, hooked it up there. Anyway, the battery is now connected properly, and uh, you can see all of our connections here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and look at the solar charge controller, and we'll make sure that the charging profile is set up for these sealed AGM batteries. Okay, here we are at the 
solar charge controller you can see it's set to flooded okay so you hold the B button and it gives you an option to change the type of battery here set up so it says sealed AGM flooded or LFP lithium I think well I'm not sure what LFP means so we'll go to AGM hold the B button or maybe hold the A button yep there we go so the battery percentage on here goes by how much voltage you have so if you hit the button here that's how much amp hours we've created from solar and then so it goes by how much so right now we're at 12.7 volts and that's where we get this 82 percent from so now we can go ahead and plug in the camper and we are pretty much done with this project all right guys so learn from my mistakes right hook up your batteries properly it's not too hard of a project uh, as far as you know technicality goes but there were some things we ran into like i said the propane bottles were kind of in the way um, so also when we put the propane cover on you can't get to the lock but hopefully we won't have to open this anytime soon so if i really need to get in the battery box i can just take the propane cover off and get to the lock but uh, otherwise it's a lot better a lot uh, more secure box this is again 115 bucks at harbor freight it's got a little gas strut on it which is kind of nice holds it up and uh, you know if i ever need to i can put like a little motion light in there just so it can see in case i need to mess with something in here again learn from a mistake hook these batteries up properly and if you're swapping from if you're swapping from the old battery box there's actually little instruction there's actually little instructions here that tell you how to hook it up properly so yeah follow those instructions so like i said i'll probably put um, some sort of strap in here to hold the batteries down so they don't move while we're traveling down the road but um, otherwise um, not too again not too too big of a project but it's a nice project to do you can put bigger batteries in here i do plan on going lithium sometime soon not right now i <laughs> spent money on the camper but um, anyway let me know if you guys have any questions on the process here or anything that i've had to do on the tongue of the, the uh, epro 15 tb anything here should also apply to a geo pro because they're exactly the same camper so um, again if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below hit that like button hit subscribe i'll see you on the next video mm -hmm.